All right, next step up here is looking at uh, data. We've looked at data graphically, and now we're going to look at data in terms of describing data, but we're going to do it now with numbers. And the two primary things we're going to talk about are center and spread. So in center, and some of this you may have heard before in your past math careers in terms of different words that we use to describe center. Um, sometimes you hear the word mean. Um, the three big ones, anyways, are mean, median, and mode. All right, another word for mean is the average. You know, so the mean is equal to, if you, some of you might be familiar with this writing here, but that's capital sigma. If you add up all the x values and then divide by how many there are, that's the average. Uh, and we have a special letters that we use for it. Um, if we are taking it from a sample of values, we call it x bar. All right. So these might be new names for you, don't worry. We're going to use them so many times that you'll be very familiar. Uh, the median does not have a special symbol that we usually use. Uh, but the median is what's called the middle value. All right, so if you list them lowest to highest, the middle number is the median. And then the mode is the one that happens most often. All right, so if you have a value that's repeated, that's the, 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 the value that's repeated the most is called the mode. Notice with this, all of these are only good for using quantitative data. Quantitative, because it has to be something measurable so you can add them up. You can't add up hair color and divide by five people. That doesn't make any sense. So anyways, spread words that correspond. Whenever we're using the mean, uh, the spread value that we use is what's called the standard deviation. And I'll show you the formula later, um, but the standard deviation is lowercase s. Um, now, sometimes there's Greek letters that go with this. So I'll tell you right now, sometimes the mean will use the Greek letter mu. So it's kind of like the letter u, but it kind of looks like an m, and we together call it m mu, m u mu. All right, and for the standard deviation, the Greek letter will sometimes use as lowercase sigma. But don't worry, we'll use those a lot later, and you'll be very, very familiar with them. The median, uh, if we're using data that we talk about the median for the middle value, we will use what is called the interquartile range, the IQR, and we'll also talk about the range. And then lastly for mode, um, we really don't have a measure of spread that we use when talking about the mode just because it's not used that often. Now mode, most often, this is the one, let it count it, one way to describe data with numbers, sort of numbers, um, for qualitative data. So this is used for qualitative. Qualitative, just trust me, that's what it says, qualitative. Uh, because you're looking at, well, what happens the most often? Redheads. Oh, redheads, most often, that's the mode. Now here we have a data set, and we're going to start using some uh, math to find certain values. Um, so to find the mean, I would add them all up. So you'd actually have to take your calculator, put them all in, and divide by... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if you'd add all of those up and divide by 12, you would get the average. Why don't you go ahead and do that, and you're going to fill that into the reflection response portion of this sheet. Now to find the median, you'd have to first list them lowest to highest. Luckily for you, I've already done it. So you see them listed lowest to highest. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There they are. So if you have 12 data points, you're looking to see, well, which one is the middle value? So if you count 6 from the top and 6 from the bottom, you actually find out that there isn't a data point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's right here. It's in between those two middle ones. In a case like this, when the middle number isn't actually a number in the data set, you take those middle two numbers and you average them, and my median is 535. All right, some other things that we're going to calculate here is what's called the uh, range. Range is equal to maximum minus minimum. So that would be 720 
minus 330, which is 390. So the range of values is 390. Next we're going to find what's called the first quartile, Q1. First quartile is a fancy name for the 25th percentile. 25th percentile, you say to yourself, what's the 25th percentile? 25th percentile is the bottom quarter. So if you go back up here and look at the data, there's the median. The median is also called the 50th percentile. Okay, I'm abbreviating. The 50th percentile, which means 50% of the data is at or below this value. Well, if you listed them lowest to highest, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 out of 12 total data points is 50%. So 50% of the data is at or below this number. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at just the bottom half. And I find the middle of the bottom half. The middle of the bottom half is the first quartile. So as I look there, I go, okay, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values. So 6 divided, so halfway would be right here, in between 480 and 480. Well, halfway between 480 and 480 is 480, so that's the first quartile, or the 25th percentile. And again, 25th percentile means 25% of the data is at or below that point, which it is. And then we're going to find Q3 which is the 75th percentile. Now again, these are all things you should be writing down if you've never heard these terms before. Q3 is the 75th percentile. Then you hit pause, you write that down, and you unpause, and then you find out that, okay, that's the middle point of the top half. And again, there are one, two, three, four, five, six data points. So the 20, sorry, the 75th percentile is halfway between those two, because there were three below it, and 3 above it. So halfway between 600 and 610 is 605. That's the first quartile and third quartile or the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile percentile. Some math shorthand. So what I have here now all right, I rewrote those five numbers that I had on the previous page. Q1, excuse me, that's the minimum. That was the minimum, the smallest number. That was Q1. That's the median. That was Q3, and that was the maximum. This is what's called a five-number summary. It actually has a specific name. It's called the five-number summary. And we're going to use it to make a graph. So down here you see I have a graph labeled from 300 to 800. I tried to make them all the same with, obviously I didn't, um, but you should try to always have them incremented the same way. And then I can start plotting these points. So 330 is probably right about here. Then I have 480, which is right about there. 535 is going to be here. 605 is just above 600. And then 720. Notice I'm not putting a whole lot of time into doing it. It's about getting it down. And now these middle three are going to make a little longer. And this is what's called a box plot. So the middle three connect to make a box. That goes to the left. That goes to the right. And those are what are called sometimes whiskers. But again, remember, three third, excuse me, 480 is that number right there, which is the 25th percentile, which means in this zone is 25% of the data. The median is the 50th percentile, which means 50% of the data is at or below. So in this range is 50% of the data. 605 is here, which means below that is 75% of the data, which also then means above it is 25% of the data for a grand total of 100%. Inside of this box from Q1 to Q3, I want you in the reflection response portion to put down how what percent of the data is in this box. All right? And I'll tell you right now, it doesn't matter what if I had drawn this and my graph had looked like this. Let's say my graph had looked like that. All right? The percent of the data in here if this were based off of actual real data 
should be the same as this. So see if you can figure that out, put that in the reflection response. Lastly, we have the mean and standard deviation. We'll go through this in class a little bit more too, but the standard deviation, we've already talked about the mean, standard deviation is the average distance of every data point from the mean. So what I mean by that is if a data point is picked at random from my group, uh, the standard deviation tells me how far away I would expect it to be on average. Now the actual way to calculate it <clears throat> is I take every data point, so let's say take um, the, the minimum, 330, I'm going to subtract the average from that value. I'm going to then square that so it'll be positive. And then I take the next data point in the data set. And I go all the way up until I've done it. Uh, how many data points were there? Yes, that's correct. There were 12 data points. The last one being 720. 720 minus the average. So that's the, you know, again, that's how far it is from the average. That's the distance. I square it. I do all of that divided by n minus 1. So in this case, it would be n is 12. There's 12 data points. And then the last thing I do at the very end is I take the square root. When I'm done with that, that is what is equal to s, the standard deviation or the average distance of every data point from the mean. We'll go through a an example in class where we'll actually calculate it out, and you'll see that because um, sometimes people ask, you know, why do we have to square it? Well, if I just add all these up without squaring, that adds to zero, and zero divided by anything is zero, and then square root of zero is zero, and your standard deviation would always be zero. So the squaring and the square rooting is kind of the way to get rid of the positive. And then some people say, why, why not absolute value? Well, trust me, there's a lot of calculus that goes into this for why this is the correct equation. Uh, but when at the very beginning I said whenever we're doing standard deviation, excuse me, whenever we're doing the mean, we use standard deviation because the mean is part of the standard deviation formula. And then the question is, well, when do I use the mean and when do I use the median? Okay, if I have data that's symmetric, I can use either one. It really doesn't matter. If it's exactly symmetric, that's unusual, but if it's exactly symmetric, then these two values are going to be equal to each other. All right. If the data is skewed, remember what that is? So if I have a distribution that looks like this, that would be considered left skewed. Um, or if I have a distribution that's right skewed, something like that crazy looking thing. Um, in those cases, I use the median. And the reason why is the mean got skewed by these large values up here, or small values there, or here, large values. All right, so the mean is less, uh, uh, it's just not as good. Um, what that is called, because extremely large values impact the mean, or extremely small values impact the mean, um, the mean is what's called not resistant. That is, it does not resist change. Um, it, it is influenced by small numbers and large numbers. The median is what's called resistant. So if I go back to my last example of 330 from the SAT questions, those SAT scores that I had, that's what they were, they were SAT scores, if I change that 330 to a 0, just change it, 330 to a 0, the median stays the same, but the average would get a lot less. Or if I make the 720 the highest value in 800, the mean changes, but the median stays the same. Which is why the median is what's called resistant. Mean is not resistant. All right, that's a really long video. I poured a lot of information at you. Take time to actually take notes. Fill out the reflection response. Get that submitted. I'll see you in class.